Patent and Trademark Office is a performance-based organization. And as a performance-based organization, African Americans have been allowed to weave themselves into the fabric of what constitutes the Patent and Trademark Office. And that is because of the attitude and the ability to be able to be judged by your performance and how you conduct yourself in this environment. I was born and raised right here in the city of Alexandria, and I've had the opportunity of incorporating some of that history in our black history programs here at the USPTO. A couple of years ago, we started taking field trips as part of our black history events for the month of February. And last year, we decided we wanted to emphasize historic places in the city of Alexandria. There was a trading post, and it's literally almost across the street from the Patent and Trademark Office on Duke Street, where when slaves were brought, they were held there until the slave owners came and moved them to their plantation. We walked past it every day, and I was born and raised here, and I had never known that and had never visited that site. I would consider the U.S. Congress as hallowed ground. When I study some of the history and I hear the first black congressman right after Jim Crow was imposed to be able to, for people who were empowered, I also consider not that place, but maybe people who were instrumental, who may, may not be black. There were judges in the South that were very instrumental in undoing the shackles of Jim Crow. I would have to say it would be the church where I grew up. The place that I think of as Hollow Ground, probably because my mother grew up in New York, is definitely the Apollo Theater. She took me there when I was a kid a long time ago. For me, at least in the black community, that's a big, it's a big thing. Like if you wanted to be a performer, you had to go there. I mean, Michael Jackson performed there and Smokey Robinson performed there. It would have to be my grandfather's print shop. He owned a print shop in Richmond and I think he commanded probably I'm going to say majority of the city contracts for the most part. The number of people who actually put trust in his work was a, was a big deal. I have a cousin who traced our roots. Our family's from North Carolina, but we came here by way of Sierra Leone. And she talks about that journey. She talks about the nine slave families at that plantation, and it was called Somerset Plantation, and now it's an historic site. I will never forget the day, that day, August 30th, 1986, where I had an opportunity to meet my family members that I had never seen, never known, so it was very inspirational. I was really proud to see how far um, we've come in these families and the pride that everyone had visiting that plantation. I always had a teacher who told me, you got to know where you came from in order to know where you're going. So I just think that we should never forget our heritage and that we should always remember what people went through so that we may have a better life. I've seen a lot of change. I've seen us uh, progress and become more acceptable and accepted. The progress that we've seen in these United States cannot be denied. I look state governors, and I think we have something to cheer about. I see where my ancestors, how they fought so that I could vote. I, I've never missed an election because of that. 50 years ago, the world was completely different, but I think things are changing and improving, so it's nice that Black History Month or maybe reflecting on blacks in a positive way has led to us being considered equal members of society. I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and it seems like their Black History Month is 365 a year. That's all you heard in school. My grandparents, that's a lot of what they stress, the black history. The first black governor since the Civil War, Douglas Wilder, he's actually from Richmond. When you talk about anything for black history, it's slavery and Martin Luther King during the Civil Rights. And I feel like there's way more to black history than just those two things. My mother was very big on educating us outside of school for Black History Month. We spent the majority of the month talking about slavery or um, Martin Luther King Jr. And she thought that wasn't enough. So she bought these books so that she can say, in addition to one civil rights leader, we can also sing and dance and explore and do chemistry and things like that. I think it's excellent because it really encouraged me and my brother to just sort of set our expectations really far and really wide, saying we can do anything. We don't have to just be Martin Luther King Jr. or Jay-Z. We can, you know, be Oprah or Josephine Baker or Matthew Henson, Richard Allen, 
Miriam McLeod with them. I can go on. <laughs> Black History Month is important to me because it highlights some of the achievements and the achievers that we do have. Whoever writes your history <laughs> can kind of control your destiny of sorts. So um, when I tell kids not just about civil rights leaders, but about inventors and uh, about other people who are doing great things. I want to see the light bulbs go off in their head. Yes, I can do that too. My mom was really big on education. Um, she noticed early on that I was really good at math and she was like, you know, there are black astronauts if you ever want to go to space and things like that. Like just, just so I didn't think that I couldn't do something in science because I was the only person in my class who really just took to math. The STEM field, it's this field that's really lacking, especially in America and especially in the black community. I think the so, numbers are like 6% Yeah, the numbers, yeah, for in terms of collegiate graduations, mm -hmm. it's about 6 or 7% of black engineers. The National Society of Black Engineers is a nationally known organization. Nesby is important because it builds a community amongst black engineers, which is a very small community. A lot of times, for example, when I was in Hopkins, I started off as an engineer and I was the only black person there. And so Nesby kind of brings all the students together and lets you know that there are other people who are in the same predicament as you in the same situation. What I've seen in, in 50 some odd years is an increase in the number of African Americans in politics. Notably, we have an African American president. I am also well aware of the impact that we have had in music, art, and as an African American here at the Patent and Trademark Office, in invention, how African Americans have actually made tremendous contributions. The USPTO proudly recognizes the contributions of African Americans to our great country especially their invaluable contributions to the realm of intellectual property. African American employees have been at work at the USPTO for over 180 years. Anthony Bowen was our first black patent clerk in the 1830s. USPTO's work supports America's innovators. This includes African Americans whose inventions made life easier, better, or safer for all of us, but who may not have received the recognition they deserved at the time. As America's Innovation Agency, we celebrate not just the history of African American innovation, but the fact that that history is being made every day here at the USPTO. Today, nearly a quarter of USPTO employees are African American, and the agency employs more than 1,000 African American scientists and engineers, more than any other time in our history.